Welcome to Present Truth Broadcast with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga. Brought to you by Present Truth Ministry, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. Praise God. There is the need to remind ourselves again con- God's Word concerning healing. You know, most times, uh, especially when it comes to the subject of healing, most times we always think that uh, healing school, healing classes, or healing meetings are for sick people. And actually, it's a wrong understanding. Praise God. It's a wrong understanding. And the reason is because uh, the word of healing is something that you always require. In fact, one of the areas that God is beginning to renew my mind is in the area of confessing the, the word of healing every day. And, and, and the way the Spirit of God put it in my heart is that by the declaration of the word of healing daily, we are immunizing ourselves against sickness and disease. Praise God. Now, when you immunize yourself or when you take a vaccine and you immunize yourself, you're actually uh, preventing, taking something that will prevent all of that to happen to you, all of those sickness and diseases. Now, so uh, never have the understanding that healing school or healing classes are only for sick people. No. You are also learning not just how to receive healing, but learning the divine truths. So you can communicate healing to others. Are are you following me now? Come on, I said, are you following me? So it's important for us to understand that we are not just the ones to stay healed. We are the ones to dispense healing. Are are you following this? So it is important that we understand the product that we're dispensing. You know, if someone comes to you and wants to market a product, you're going to ask questions about that product. It's the same thing with healing. It's important for us to understand what healing is, how healing comes, what's God's mind concerning healing. And understanding these truths not only positions us to minister healing to the sick, understanding these truths actually position us to walk in perfect health. Praise God. Because God wants us healthy. That's God's plan. That's God's mind. Now, let's go back to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Remember, we talked about starting from that original position that God wanted man to be in. So, this is a healing school. This is a healing class. So, we're going to be going through scriptures to learn, to understand, to reaffirm the truths of God's word concerning healing. Go with me to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the earth, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. So we understand something very particular from this verse, that man was created in the image of God. Man was created in the image of God. And now I I established yesterday that that's what the new creation is. The new creation is back to this standard of a man on earth that would bear the image of God. Now, I want to point out something to you. Because we live in the earth realm, we we are inundated, we are saturated by imperfections. And because we are surrounded by imperfections, we do not find it very normal to hold ourselves to perfect standard. So, when a man reads the scripture, the first thing he's trying to do is to find an excuse why the things of the scripture cannot be so. Are are you following me? I was listening to someone I respect a lot in ministry and he changed my perspective. Totally. You know, every time we read the, the story of the woman with the issue of blood, it was Brother Copeland actually. Every time we read the story with, of, of the woman with the issue of blood, I want to ask you a honest question. How many times have you heard that story and you were 
uh, in that story, you were referred to as the woman with the issue of blood. Let me explain this. When a pastor starts preaching about the woman with the issue of blood, you know what happens? He starts saying, if you are like that woman. Right. I said, right. Yes, All right. He starts saying, if you are like that woman, if you have suffered many years, Jesus is here to heal you. Right. Every time you are always seen as the woman with the issue of blood. Now, have you ever thought that in that story, you could be Jesus? Have you ever thought that way? That in that story, I could be Jesus and others are the people with the issue of blood. That if they touch me, they can be made whole. You see, you're always quick to associate yourself with the woman who is bleeding. It will take a, a, a teacher of God's word to make you see yourself who christ sees you when god looks at that story now he does not he no longer sees you as a woman with the issue of blood who needs faith to be healed he sees you as the dispenser of the virtue and others are those who need to touch you to get home and you see how long it's going to take you to renew your mind to see that i'm not the one with the issue <laughs> They are the ones with the issue. I'm the one with the power. Praise God. I know for some of you now, you're still feeling because you have you so love that woman. It, it, it typifies your story. You're falling in love with that woman. No. You are the light of the world. You are not the woman with the issue of blood. You are the man Jesus. Praise God. Now, I don't mean that you are Jesus Christ. But Christ now lives in you. So as the same way that Jesus was walking on the earth is the same way he is in you now. The Bible says God, Christ, God is in us reconciling the whole world to himself. How is he doing this? Simply, he says through the word of reconciliation. The message is the means. Are you following what I'm saying? Because now, you know, social media is very far. You're going to say, oh, well, Pastor Maxwell said we are Jesus. I didn't say that. But Christ is in you. He lives in you. The, 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 the message which we're going to deal with tonight, the message of identification is very crucial. You know why they wanted to kill Jesus? They said, for the miracles will not kill you. He says, but you being man, making yourself God, is the reason we want to stone you. The message that religion has always fought is the message that God lives in man. They won't fight anything. But immediately you start telling them that divinity lives in you. Then you know what they, quick, they quickly do? They start pointing you to your flesh. Okay, if you say Christ lives in you, why is this happening? If you say Christ lives in you, why is this happening? No, what is happening does not dispute the, the truth. Our experience are not the validation. Are, are you following what I'm saying? Can I tell you something? I can be sick right now, I'm not sick, but I can be sick right now and still teach you the truths of divine healing. It does not remove from the truth. I'm not teaching the truth of divine healing because I am 100% whole. I'm teaching the truth of divine healing because that's the truth. My experience notwithstanding. Are you following what I'm saying? Come on, are you following what I'm saying? But then the more we begin to hear these truths, the more our experiences will begin to line up. So if you look at the woman with the story of the woman with the issue of blood, stop seeing yourself as the woman who needs to touch. <laughs> Start seeing yourself as the representative of Jesus who has been sent like Paul that aprons and handkerchiefs from your bodies are now healing the sick. Hallelujah. 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 That's the way we must see. So in Genesis 1:26 uh man that's the perfect image that god had now let's go to genesis chapter 1 verse 31 thank you lord jesus genesis chapter 1 and verse 31 praise god genesis 1 31 then god saw how many things everything that he had made and indeed it was what very good now i want to ask you a question if the man that god created in genesis was sick are you sure god is going to say that it was very good 
Come on, are you are you sure? No. Some of you are not sure yet. I, listen, I don't care what you believe. Sickness is not God's will. Let's just summarize it that way first. It's not the will of God. Are you following that? Now, if that man in Genesis had sickness in him, God will not say everything is very good. So it means that when God saw that man in Genesis, there was no sickness. That's God's perfect plan. Before sin came. So it can tell us something very clearly that it is true sin that sickness came into the world. Because we only read of sickness and death after sin. <laughs> you know, most of us, we have, let me, let me say this. I hope I have, I can finish up. But let me, let me say this to you. We have been trained to accommodate sickness. We don't even see sickness as bad. Let me put it this way. We just think it's normal. So you hear somebody say, you, you, you know, you meet someone and say, oh, I think I have malaria. He says, ah, yes, now it's rainy season. Do you understand? It's like saying, what else should you have? You should have it. Are you following what I'm saying? Or you get into a place. In fact, I have sat with a, a, a pharmacist at the time. And I, someone was sick with, with typhoid. And he says, ah, typhoid is very common in this place. And it's a very serious typhoid in such a way that, in fact, you know, it's almost like saying typhoid is part of us. Are, are you still here? Come on, I said, are you still here? Sometimes it's just normal for us to accept sickness because we've been trained that way. Oh, it's rainy season. That's how we catch cold. You know, some people even say, uh, you know, I catch cold always. Every time it's cold, my nose start running. It's almost like cold is equal to running nose. Then he said, that's how I was born. That's why we're saying you should be born again. That's why we're preaching this message. Uh, are you following what I'm saying? Do you imagine Adam with handkerchief in the garden, always blowing his nose? Say, why is it cold? No, I don't think so. So I say, oh, is anything wrong with it? I think so. I'm going to teach you the truths of God's word. Make sure your life lines up with it. I don't even care if I'm preaching this with runny nose. My life needs to line up with it. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Let's raise our lives to the standards of divinity. Let's not bring it down. I was telling someone the other day, I said, even if I'm on my sick bed, dying, and they, they have to bury me, I said, let them write on it. This is the man who believes in divine healing. And he said, ah, what killed him? Sickness. What did he believe? Divine healing. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? What I'm trying to say is that my belief is in the truth regardless of what happens to my mortal body. We must, we must understand this. Are you following what I'm saying? This is the truth and I believe it. Oh, but you're not experiencing it. I believe it. And if I believe it long enough, my body is going to line up with it. So we must never come to the point where we reduce our experiences. Oh, my mother was usually sick at her right hand side. I am like my mother. So I started feeling that pain. You're not like your mother. You're like Christ. That should be more stronger to you than your heritage. You know, some of you have taken your cultural sickness. Say we, so-so people from so-so tribe, we always have headaches around me. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is when you start talking this way people say your own is too much no it's not too much it's word much that's what the word says praise God and we stick by the word this broadcast is made possible by friends and partners of present truth to become a partner please call plus 234-805-888-75 75. God bless you. Let me explain something to you and let me tell you something. You see, one sickness, the day I 
this statement came up in my heart it changed my life one sickness can wipe away your entire savings in a lifetime one sickness all the doctors have to say is we don't know what is wrong with you everything you have worked for in this life will be gone and you know the funny thing everything you've worked up in this life will be gone and then you will be gone so never treat sickness with light gloves be big on your healing rights once you feel any pain don't be quick to run to the chemist take authority over it stop it spiritually first before you start taking drugs say in the name of jesus not my body i rebuke it before it becomes cancer stop it stop the growth you find something in your body then you say ah is it well don't be asking questions you're not a doctor stop in jesus name stop it first then you can start asking questions don't treat sickness like jesus did not pay the price the way we fight poverty if we fight sickness like that most of us will live in divine health are you following what i'm saying You know, actually, when you tell some people you're not sick, they don't think you're normal. Because people feel that once in a while, you should have sickness to just test that you are human. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, let me show you something. In Genesis chapter 5, go with me to Genesis chapter 5. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you still here? Say amen if you're here. In Genesis chapter 5, you know the Bible said something about Adam. It says that, the day you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. Right? So, Adam ate. Listen carefully now. This is, a, this is a very key part of the message. Adam ate of the fruit that day. But Adam did not die that day. So, the death that Adam died, actually, well, many refer to it as spiritual death, but, which is correct, and I agree with that, but the death that Adam died that day actually was separation from divine life. What, what it means is that Adam was separated from the presence of God. Now, uh, I want you to follow this. Adam had the very life of God in him. The Zoe life, the God kind of life. Now, it had to take time, listen carefully, it had to take time for death to touch Adam's mortal body. Let me explain it. It's like Adam was full of divine life. And on this date, Adam was separated from divine life. You know that he had so much residue of divine life in him, it took time for him to die. How will I explain it now? But do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's like, oh, it's okay, let me use a tree, but it should not be a very perfect example. You know, when you cut a tree, it, it doesn't go brown the first day. If it's a big tree. It doesn't go brown the first day. It doesn't go brown the second day. Probably the fourth and the fifth day it starts going brown, right? Now, why did the tree not go um, uh, go brown the first day you cut it? Although you had cut it from the life. It was because there was some life in the trunks. So it had to use that life up before the separation started reflecting in his body. I, I, are you following what I'm saying? So actually, in Genesis chapter 5 verse 5, the day Adam sinned, he died. But the time, the time it took for death to be able to take a hold of Adam was 930 years. It took that long for his body to begin to sense that ah, we're disconnected. Now, it took Adam 930 years. That's in Genesis 5.5. 5. It took Seth 912 years. That's Genesis 5.8. It took Enosh 905 years. That is Genesis 5.9. It took Canaan 9, 910 years. That is Genesis 5.12. It took Mahila, uh, Genesis 5.17, 895 years. It took Jared 962 years. The guy was even older than Adam. Right? <laughs> now, you see, they were all living between 900, 900 and something. You know, it's like, hey, which of your birthday are we coming from? Say, well, I'm celebrating 900. Say, so you're a young man. Your father died at 930. <laughs> they were not, it wasn't, it wasn't, <laughs> 
They were not conscious of the fact that they should die at 80. I'm going to explain that scripture to you because some of you have misinterpreted that scripture. God never said man should die at 80. It was the lamentation of Moses. I'll show you today. God never, that's never God's will for man. You see, let me tell you something. Why do you cry when people die? Why? Why do you cry? Even some of you that are strong, uh, Baba is old, but I know he needed to live. Every time some, somebody dies, you cry. Why? It's because it's not a good thing. Are you following what I'm saying? It's not a good thing. There's something about you. There's a pain in you that it's almost like saying, this is not it. Mm, this is not how it should be. Are, are you following what I'm saying? You see that any, whatever, whenever anybody dies, the first thought that comes to your mind is why doesn't he come back to life? That's your first thought. Are you following what I'm saying? Your first thought is to reject the news. No, he cannot die. It's a lie. No, he can, why? It is divinity you crying out and say this is not normal. Are you following what I'm saying? That's how it is. Praise God. Now, Adam lived 930, Seth 912, Enosh 905, Canaan 910, Mashael 895, Jared 962. Then this is the guy that I love. Enoch, Genesis 5, 21. Enoch did 365 and crossed the line. He just broke death. The Bible says he pleased God so much, God took him. He skipped death. <laughs> he lived for 365 years and then the guy just went. Uh, did he die? No, he just skipped that part of his program. Like, no, I'm not doing this. Praise God. <laughs> he not skipped it. So much of divine life. The Bible says he had this testimony that he pleased God. What does it take, take to please God? Look at this. Faith. Everybody say faith. That's what it takes to please God. Praise God. That's what it takes to please God. Faith. Look at this. In Genesis chapter 5 verse 25, Methuselah lived 969 years. Methuselah lived how many years? 900 and what? 69 years. And in Genesis chapter 5 verse 30, Lamech lived 777 years. I want you to see how long these men lived. They did not have the new covenant. Jesus had not even died for them. They didn't die because they were not used to it. Imagine if your father died at 960 and you are dying at 80. You are a baby. Do you understand? They won't even conduct funeral for you. They'll think, that, ah, why did this child die at 80? Whilst now, even at 80, if you are dead, they'll say a hey, life well spent. In fact, some people expect you to die. Say, How old is your father? He says 75. Say, is he alive? The others are like, ah, what's the man doing here? Why? Because our concept of old age is that we'll be bent. They'll not be saying, Papa, say, Papa can not remember his children. No. And I say, Papa, is me. You know, because we're used to that kind of life. No, no, no. Abraham had Isaac at about 100 years old. The word of God to Abraham actually changed the life and the room and the texture and the cells of Sarah. Actually went to work in her body. Altered every single thing about Sarah. God's word. <laughs> we must agree that the church has fallen far behind divine purpose right now we are afraid of witches killing us at 35 how poor you know Adam will look at us and will laugh and say even in my sin nature I outlived you guys I broke God's commandment directly and I still outlived you guys 
all night, anointing oil, mantle, holy water, coconut oil. Some of you will even go and meet native doctors to rob you. You have mixed all the concussion. You still die at 45. You know why? Because the fear of death has already taken hold on you. How do I know? Let me just, let me just share this. How do I know? Everything is about death. Build a house in the village. So when you die, they will have somewhere to bury you. What's your motivation? Death. Marry on time. So that at least before you die, your children would have finished school. What's the motivation? Death. Everything, they mark it up with death. Everything is death. Do this before you die. Do this before you die. Have a savings, you can die at any time. You, do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's almost like our motivation for living is how soon we're going to die. Everything in the news is death. You turn the news today, 40 killed, plane crash, accident. You know what that does to our mind? That's only what we read. You know, I, was, I saw something. Uh, a woman, they said he, she, she's lived for 108 years old on Facebook. Then I said, oh, share it so that it will go viral. I said, if it was Adam's time, this would be a shame. That means... You still have like 700 years to live. So you see, 100 is big to us. I mean, the 100 we are saying is big to us is 100 that the man's eyes are closed. The man does not recognize himself. We just say, as far as the man is still breathing at 100, he's big to us. Why at 100, Abraham was still having babies? You understand what I mean by that? It means that something is wrong. Number one, something is fundamentally wrong with our theology. Number two, something is fundamental, fundamentally wrong with our belief system. Number three, something is fundamentally wrong with our expectations. Hallelujah. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video format. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805. 888-7575 or send us an email office at pastormax.ng Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng God bless you.